Now today's point of discussion is going to be One Piece chapter 985 and 986 and I'm mainly just going through things that I find very interesting and things that could obviously lead to more things moving forward. Obviously you wouldn't want me to go through every single thing that happens in chapter because all these things are things that don't really need any sort of going in depth because they're kind of self-explanatory or just surface level. But let's get into One Piece chapter 985 and 986. The Scabbards versus Conjuro. Uh, we kind of saw this coming, especially since he betrayed the Alliance. It was kind of inevitable that Conjuro was going to die in some way and most likely by the other Scabbards, especially with the confrontation that we saw in chapter 985, where pretty much a good majority of the Scabbards were going up against him in a 1v5 with a bunch of small users that, you know, a father for the most part. Now, granted, Conjuro is a Devil Fruit user, but still, this was not a battle that he was going to win. But Conjuro so far has been a very competent enemy for the Alliance because of the amount of things he's done so far that sort of deter the Alliance from moving forward. Ever since Zoe, we know that he was the person leaking information to Jack and whatnot. He was a very calculating individual, which gives a lot of clarity as to why Kinemon's unintentional plan worked because that was something that came out of left field. The only way that they were able to trick Conjuro was doing something that they themselves were not aware of, which really goes to show how much of a threat Conjuro was. And I really like I liked how Wakiku took the initiative in this chapter. That was cool given that she felt the most grief after hearing what Kanjuro did to Momonosuke. And also that samurai gear that she has on looks amazing. Now eventually they take out Kanjuro and I'm assuming they killed him because some of them were shedding tears and that's a normal response. Uh, even though Kanjuro showed his true colors by being a spy, that didn't erase any of the time that they spent with him. We also get to see the portrayal between the scabbards as shown with Denjiro and Kinemon being the more prominent ones among the scabbards now kinemon we always knew that he was the leader of the scabbards for a very long time because we know that orochi was always wary of kinemon like being this mastermind right there was definitely a highlight on him being a very troublesome force for orochi and someone that orochi recognized even though that wasn't necessarily the case but i digress and we also get to see denjiro walking by his side and some of the other scabbards waiting for their leader to move forward and i guess you could say that denjiro and kinemon were given this highlight because they they were pretty much the first of Odin's retainers. I think Kinemon came first and then Jiro was second if I remember correctly. Now Luffy and Yamato. Now we get more of Luffy and Yamato in this chapter and as well as their dynamic. And Yamato could be straw hat material. I think this has been a topic of conversation ever since Yamato said that, you know, that Luffy should let her on the crew. And a lot of people have made videos regarding this. Uh, but personally, I'm not too sure where to stand here yet. And as cool as it is having someone like Yamato on the crew, you know, join the crew right now, for me, it doesn't seem to be that way. I think we need more to happen to actually set that in, in place in stone. But I see how people think that she will join the crew based on the evidence that has been presented to us, right? But again, I think more just needs to happen. And there's also the issue of her knowing what the One Piece is, you know, given that she has Odin's journal, which should have everything in it as Odin recorded most of what he saw during his travels with Roger. So having a crewmate that knows the Void Sentry, you know, Joy Boy, and of course the One Piece kind of brings a problem to what she's going to be doing on the crew per se. Uh, but again, this this is a topic that is going to be interesting moving forward because this will change the straw hats as a whole moving forward just because of the elements the few elements that Yamato brings to the table but I'm definitely looking forward to what Oda has in store for Yamato just because of the correlation that's there between Odin Ace and obviously with Luffy as well anytime Ace is involved Luffy definitely gets involved himself but I will say that Yamato is looking like straw hat crew material right now but we'll see what happens moving forward and where Oda takes this Now, one of the more interesting things about chapter 985 was the Big Mom and Kaido alliance. And this is huge just because of the implication it has for the entirety of the One Piece world. And here we have Kaido basically giving out his speech and declaring that him and Big Mom are in an alliance because they have decided to set their goals on obtaining the One Piece 
via the use or the existence of the ancient weapons and it's really all come in full circle now because we've always had this theory that was in the community for a very long time and that was that one of the yonkos is probably coming to fishman island because we know that Shirley saw into a future where fishman island was destroyed and the symbol that she saw was uh one of the straw hat meaning that luffy is most likely involved and it all ties back to the idea of caribou who we know knows about the ancient weapon specifically poseidon and he was overhearing uh robin and king neptune's conversation back in fishman island and i find it hard to believe that oda put that there in there for no reason at all and that same caribou was then caught by x drake and just happens to be on wano the territory of one of the yonko and i find it weird that kaido is taking the initiative to actually acquire an ancient weapon i think it makes more sense that he knows where some of these ancient weapons are and that information could have been leaked by our boy caribou so if they're going after any ancient weapons right now it's definitely going to be poseidon which could lead to the destruction of fishman island eventually just because shirahoshi is there and that could also tie into the idea that f the fishmans will be living on the surface end game maybe that could be the promise that joy boy couldn't deliver on so the destruction of fishman island indirectly leads to the fishmen finding home on the surface once again and we know that you know noah wasn't completely destroyed by luffy luffy destroyed half of it but we also but he got stopped by the sea kings and we know that the sea kings were planning on fixing the noah again which could be used to harbor the fishmen so that they can go up to the surface but if anything kaido's speech here really sets up the beginning of the end of one piece because it seems like things are going to be happening on a global scale from now on it's not just going to be oh we're dealing with one yonko right separately we're going to be dealing with multiple factions moving forward the revolutionary the marines the world government and who knows maybe rocks is somehow alive and he comes into play in all of this as well but again i think this is setting up the final war in one piece and interestingly kaido is also trying to make wano his stronghold now just because of its natural defenses against i, I guess you could say invaders and it's also trying to make yamato as the new shogun of wano probably as a figurehead to control the people the big mom and kaido alliance huge implications there and it sort of makes me believe that kaido might not be defeated on Wano per se. He might actually be involved in this final war. Or maybe he might be defeated in Wano but not killed. That's what I meant to say. So we'll see what happens with before because there's a lot of it's gonna be a twist. Or is gonna throw in a curveball somewhere down the road and people are just gonna be, you know, gobsmacked, right? But I am excited for this. Now, easily the most shocking thing about chapter 985 was Orochi's supposed death, which was very surprising. And this wasn't a slash to the back or he got stabbed in the body or something vague where Oda doesn't make it apparent that this person is dying, right? Right, this was literally Orochi getting his head decapitated, which is interesting just because his devil fruit is also a compliment to that to some degree. Now, the initial reaction is that Orochi is or should be dead. But then again, we know that Orochi has a mythical devil fruit that was given to him for some reason and that mythical devil fruit specifically has eight heads which is the yamato yamata no orochi right play on words with orochi's actual name itself and so based on that alone it definitely raises suspicion that orochi could still be alive because his fruit has eight heads potentially one of the heads got taken off but he has seven more right and it was very anticlimactic for orochi to die in this sort of way just because of how much things he's done to the alliance and his history with odin being a very um antagonistic figure in all of this uh he was sort of the primary antagonist in this arc uh along with kaido even before the arc started we we were always talking about you know shogun of wano he's gonna be this crazy guy so him dying here triggers a lot of suspicion now granted he was in base form when he got killed but mythical zones work in a much different way than normal zones and even ancients uh to some degree and we've seen cases where marco who's a mythical is using his regeneration in the base in his base form he doesn't need to turn into a phoenix to apply its ability that could also apply here whereas mythical zone abilities or some of them can be innate abilities where it works when the user is in base form so i think that's probably the case here whereas he's probably just going to grow another head but he definitely lost a life here and it would make sense that now he would want to revenge against kaido because he killed him so that could be another one of kaido's shortcomings as well 
Now, obviously, all the samurai and the Oniwa Banchu joined Kaio because they would have been killed if they if they didn't, uh, because they are currently in the stronghold of a Yonko. So it makes sense that all of them joined Kaido, because that would be a death sentence if they didn't. But definitely shocking. But there's more to this, right? Orochi is probably not dead. Now we then move on to Momo's resolution and this was a cool scene that we had with Kaido and Momo and Momo professing that he will be the person to become the Shogun of Wano and that his name is Kozuki Odin. Something that Kaido was trying to force on him not to say, try to uh, intimidate him in some aspect there but he still said it regardless. And he also mentions that his name means second to nothing. So this is still a coming of age thing for Momo. Obviously, there's still a lot of trials ahead of him. But this is definitely a starting point for him to grow as a person and become the leader that the samurai are, are looking at, right? Uh, I actually made an entire video uh, talking about this, saying that Momo would unlock Conqueror's Hockey here. Obviously, that didn't happen, but he could very well use King's Hockey later on in this war uh, as Momo is really starting to recognize his own worth. Definitely a cool moment for Momo looking forward to a lot more and finally we arrive at the breakthrough the scabbards versus Kaido hype moments finally engaging Kaido ever since the battle they had 20 years ago so all that rage anger that was built up within them was unleashed in this attack that sort of that was sort of amplified by the will of Odin to the point that Kaido himself started having flashbacks to Odin again which is the reason I think they were able to hurt him and the fact that it was a scabbards to initiate the attack was amazing and it really goes back to what Luffy says here we are not the ones who started this battle they're for we shouldn't be the front runners and all of this granted while luffy will most likely take a lot of the credit for defeating kaido later on i think this is well done on oda's part having the scabbards have a highlighted moment like this especially given that this was 20 years of build-up uh that happened in a single moment right like this was a moment that was specifically made for the scabbards and no one else now they caught kaido by surprise disarmed him and pushed him back now i know there's going to be a lot of power scaling uh, arguments like where where was King's observation hockey, why wasn't anyone prepared for this, why didn't they see it coming. But the thing is, when it's by surprise, anything can happen, especially when you have like nine really strong characters, you know, ambush Kaido, a Yonko, five of which we think are around top Yonko commander level. I think the ambush and how they were caught off guard was fine. I don't think there was any issues with it or power scaling wise whatsoever. Uh, but overall, these chapters were great and I'm definitely looking forward to what's going to happen next. Now, my next video should be talking about 987 and 988 and potentially 989 since that's coming out tomorrow now obviously i'm not going to talk about everything that happens in the chapter just things that i find interesting um and things that have more depth to it but again i should be back to my regular schedule uh, just because things have been very uh, uh, hectic as of lately i'm sure you guys know what's going on right now uh but yeah i should be back to my normal one piece uploads and weekly chapters and whatnot so i appreciate you guys sticking around watching my content so expect more one piece in the next couple of days you will be definitely hearing from me but it is fair guys and i will see you folks later also drop a like and comment down below what you guys think peace